What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Rich, back to bring you your MLB props for July the 13th. I did one for the 11th, and we got the Austin Riley home run that I was praying for. Corey Seager also bombed, and unfortunately, Marcus Semien, ah, uh, man, dude broke my heart. It was terrible in that game. Comes back yesterday, has a great game. Homers, it's just very frustrating. But this Oakland Texas series has been great for overs, it's been great for totals, been great for home runs, it's been great for runs, for batting, everything. Um, tons of runs been scored in this series so far. And we will continue down that path today as we get into the player props. Make sure you drop me a like and subscribe for future content if you enjoy what I do for you every day or almost every day when I can get to it. But let's get into the plays right now because there is is one early play that I do like that I want to dive into quickly and then we'll get into the rest of the slate so let's get into it right now starting with Jorge Polanco up against Aaron Ashby today Jorge Polanco has been on a tear as you see 10.55 over his last 14 and 14.2 over his last seven. The issue is, again, not a ton of hits coming from Blanco. A lot of extra base hits, home runs, these types of things. He's been doing a lot of damage, but he hasn't been doing a lot of it consistently with the bat. So, again, I prefer to take guys with a little bit higher hit ceiling. But, again, up against Aaron Ashby today, great matchup, great pitch value, high projection, relatively low total. I don't mind it if you want to go after Polanco in the early slate. Wouldn't be probably my top pick, but I do see a lot of reasons why there is to like Polanco. The issue is, as you can see over here, he's not great against sliders right now. He's just crushing fastballs. I mean, a lot of guys, when they do well, they're crushing fastballs. So for me, I think I would be interested in taking Polanco in the early slate. I wouldn't go all in on him, though, but I do like the matchup overall. So I wanted to mention that with him being on the early slate. And you can take him later, but up, it's the matchup against Ashby where I'm more interested than other matchups because Ashby has not been great so far this season. But let's get into those Two guys that I have been touting a little bit and I've been playing quite a bit. Corey Seager and Marcus Semien. Um, Again, up against Paul Blackburn, who I think is a pretty good pitcher, but recently he's been struggling. You see the 1.33 pitch factor. He's been getting hammered, unfortunately. And Corey Seager has home runs in his last five games. He's got home runs in six of his last seven games. He's scorching hot. Um, again, 1.25 hits per game, 2.75 total bases, an RBI per game, half an extra base hit per game. Uh, Corey Seager is just man possessed right now it's pretty ridiculous what he's been doing especially recently and Semyon as well in his own right has been doing pretty well 10.92 over his last 14 10.33 over his last seven like I mentioned he did homer yesterday so I do like him in this match if you wanted to go back back to the Texas well stack him again um I do like it you know you do get a seven and a half total today with Seager yesterday was eight and a half the previous day I believe was eight and a half as well and Semyon down to six and a half so you get a slightly lower total a little bit easier to reach it and like I mentioned Texas got killed in extras yesterday. I believe it was six came across in the 12th for Oakland. Blew that game wide open. Uh, and But then Seager ultimately did hit a home run in that game to continue his streak to five games. And I do like both those guys again. So I would not be afraid of stacking Texas. Oakland's bullpen is not good. They've shown that quite a bit over the last month and a half or so. And yesterday especially we talked about both both bullpens being taxed it's another reason why i think these starters are going to need to get some length on both sides whether it's paul blackburn paul paul blackburn blackburn or john gray on the other side if you wanted to go after john gray pitching outs i do like that i think the strikeouts are a little high for my liking but again both these guys will need to go longer in the games and that is not great when you're not a great pitcher like paul blackburn has did, been he needs the length he hasn't quite been as successful pitching lately and i think texas is going to take advantage like i mentioned in texas balls flying out it has both games i believe they hit the over in both games Great spot for both these guys again, and I would be playing them. They will be part of the mix and match for sure. And then we get into Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon, again, popped in the projection system. He's been very, very hot. 14.25 over the last seven. 1.27 hits per game over his last 14 days. Over two total bases. But up against Joe Ryan, um, not a great matchup from a pitch Val perspective. And the big reason is the fastball. Um, McCutcheon, again, a little bit older. Not hitting the fastball too well, but he is hitting the slider surprisingly well. So again, if Joe Ryan just attacks him with the fastball, he may be in trouble because he hasn't been hitting fastballs very well. But a total of only six is pretty 
good. He has hit in six of his last 10 games, which is good. All this data for the last 10 games is powered by MySpari. So make sure you go to MySpari.com and subscribe for their data dump on ma for Major League Baseball if you want to get access to all of this great data. But Andrew McCutcheon is a guy I'm not going to be targeting a ton, right? I think he's a great player. I think this is a fine matchup for him. I think the Milwaukee can take advantage. I just don't think McCutcheon is the guy I would be targeting personally in this matchup. And then you get into Freddie Freeman who again hit in five of his last 10 games, was in a bit of a slump there for a little bit. But now Mookie Betts is back, and I think that's a big factor here. And then he's got 10 over his last 14 days and 12.5 over his last seven days. You see the 1.38 hits. He's getting hits. He's getting on base. These are things we like to see because as much as we love the home runs, that's when you get the boom bust outcome kind of guys, the Kyle Schwarbers, Corey Seager to some extent. But Freddie Freeman is doing it with multiple hits, multiple times, doing it consistently, getting on base, total bases over two and a half. You see, you know, half a run, uh, three quarters of an RBI, 0.62 extra base hits, which again, extra base hits are five plus points. He's got a total of only six and a half, but up against Adam Wainwright. Wainwright is a great pitcher, and so that's why you get the slightly suppressed total, but I would be fine taking Freeman in this matchup. But the guy I think I want to go more after than anybody is Bobby Witt Jr. Bobby Witt Jr. had a bit of a slump, but he's getting hot again. And the main reason why I love Bobby Witt is because he can get a steal, baby. I, I love a guy that can get a steal, get you those free five points on prize picks. You see the 8.58 over the last 14, but 11.33 over the last seven days. So again, a guy who's rounding into form, Google's been, he's had his moments. We can get a lot of Ks, but the thing is the Royals don't strike out a lot. He's been struggling a little bit. You see the fastball. He hasn't been, he's been getting hit hard pretty well. And Bobby Witt's been hitting fastballs. And he also has a slight edge in the slider department as well. So there's a lot of things like here with Bobby Witt. I do like going Seager, Semyon, and Bobby Witt. And if I didn't want to go all in on Semyon, which again, I'm a little hesitant, I think I would be going in on Seager, Freeman, and Bobby Witt. And if you want to go after an under, I don't mind Ty France here. Josiah Gray is a great pitcher, but again, he's weird. He's a guy that sometimes he looks great, sometimes he doesn't. Super young, has tons of strikeout upside. France came back, hasn't looked too great so far. He's a great hitter, but he's still working back into form after the injury. And then Jesse Winker, the same deal. He may not be in the lineup today, and we're not projected to see uh, J-Rod in the lineup as well. So there is that whole factor is that J-Rod's probably not in the lineup. France, less RBI potential with him not being on base as often. A guy who's been struggling coming back off an of injury. I do think there's a lot of edge here. He's got a line of seven. I've projected for only three and a half. Again, because he's not doing a ton, right? Two and a half or, since he's come back per game. He's never hit this number since he's come back. While Josiah Gray can struggle, I think it's an opportunity where he can take advantage of Ty France and his ability not not quite all the way back yet. So those are the guys I'd be targeting today. You could target Jorge Polanco if you get see this before the early slate. Pair him with a Seager and a Witt. But if you're looking at this a little bit later, I would probably go Seager, Semyon, and Witt. Or go Seager, Freeman, and Bobby Witt. That's kind of the way I would play these. I'd mix and match them. You know, pick three that you like based off this info or other ones that you like. And on top of that, man, I think you just got to look at the other things as well. One of the matchups I'm very excited to watch today is Christian Javier and Shohei Otani. I think that it could be an electric matchup. I, I actually bet them both to get 10 strikeouts in this game. The over for Otani keeps moving with the strikeouts. It's at 7 on prize picks right now, and it's at 6.5, I think, on DK, like minus 160. It's already moved like 30 points since I've taken it. So again, there's are things you can take advantage of. Um, these are kind of the matches I'm looking at so far, but Christian Javier and Shohei Otani, if you want to go crazy with the strikeouts those guys are they could be dynamite today um zach wheeler as, as well could be a great option if you want to go after strikeouts pitching outs all those various things i like the hitter props i think they're very exploitable and so those are the guys i'm looking at Corey seager marcus Semyon, and bobby witt freddie freeman i gave you the mix and matches i'm looking at earlier so go back and rewatch that if you missed it but they're all there seager is definitely in play freeman bobby witt, I, I i like all these guys i think they're all in great matchups as always, if you tail, give them hell. And if we fail, do not bail. I'll be back tomorrow with more MLB picks for sure. Because I'll be home and I'll be able to get, get that done for you guys. But make sure to drop me a like and subscribe to future content if you guys do appreciate what I do for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm out. Peace.